it's gone sick. And I don't like the term woke, because I hear woke, woke, woke. You know, it's like just a term that use half the people can't even define it. They don't know what it is. Well, I know I realize that the term woke, I think it's easy branding. I think people know what it is. It very much defines the Marxist cultural battle. So it's 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 easier to say this is woke and it's easier to convince people that something is stupid when you're saying this is woke as opposed to saying, well, this is cultural communism. Because that's also I think go. I mean, think back to to Maoism. What did they do in China? What did they do in China? The the their cultural revolution. It's all the same stuff that you see that's termed as woke here destroying iconic pillars of a culture to replace them with manufactured Marxist ideals. That's wokery. That's cultural Marxism. But people, for some reason, think that it can't happen again or that that's like relegated to history, and it's not. Woke is an easy brand, and I think it's easy for people to recognize. And ultimately, when it comes down to political marketing and political strategy, if you can recognize it, well, then you don't need to define it. And I think that's where he messes up because people know what it is when they see it. And that's that's significant. That's recognition. That's branding. And a lot of politics is about branding. He ought to know that. A lot of politics is about branding. It's psychological. But that was the cultural revolution. I mean, a lot of us. I think the first times we actually we, the first time we were introduced to some of this is when we were kids and we saw Tiananmen Square. And, and we saw what happened. That was in, I was in sixth grade when that happened. And I didn't really know what was going on. I remember that China was, I knew that they were communist and I knew that they were, they were oppressive. But I didn't, I don't think, you know, when, we, when you're young, you don't really, you see stuff on TV and you know that it's significant, but you don't understand why until you're older. I mean, the Cultural Revolution, they had... Old cu- culture, old customs, old habits, old ideas. All of that stuff was bad and old. Like everything here in the United States, I was reading that they're changing the names of all these forts and everything else. And, you know, one of the reasons why you had certain forts named after certain things after the Civil War concluded is that, you know, Lincoln was trying to keep the, everybody together and he was trying to be gracious in, in, his, in the Union's victory. And there were certain concessions that were made out of graciousness, not to entertain any kind of uh, you know, support of, of uh, enslavement or anything else. It was, uh, it was him being gracious, regardless of what you think about habeas corpus, he was being gracious to those people, to the people that he was trying to unite, both sides. And that's been rewritten to, that's like one of the olds. We, it has to, everything has, all American history has to be torn down. So this is, it's, it's literally a, a, a redo of, Mao's cultural revolution it's wokery and that's easier to brand and easier to put out there than talking about Marxist you know activism and culture cultural communism and so that's like I said that's where I think he messes up but this you know I was thinking about this it is how in are people at pushing back against this you know I I was looking at the reaction to the Bud Light, how many billions they've lost, how Target has been impacted, and all the people who are like, I can't believe they're freaking out over bear cons and tuck swimsuits. I mean, the, you know, Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben and the Washington Redskins and a whole bunch of other stuff would like to have a word with you. Dr. Seuss would like to have a word with you. Y'all were out banning his books. But that's the thing. I mean, ultimately, and a friend of mine made a very good point, that society is going to there's the, society cannot have an absence in terms of a standard of morality. You have to have some kind of standard of morality. And so you can either have, you know, our country. You didn't have to be a Christian to enjoy the benefits that that precept provided, because it encouraged pluralism. And a friend made that point. I thought that was a very good point. Now, if you look at cultural communism there is no dissent allowed it is lockstep it is hive mind there is no dissent there will be a standard applied do you want one that is actually 
pluralistic or one that is not because the cultural communism, what the left is promoting, that is one that is not. There was a great, um, a couple of points that were made. And I was thinking about and building off of some of these ideas. Because I've had, you know, some of you have sent emails in. They're like, oh my gosh, don't share my name. I'm writing this at work. I shouldn't even be doing this, which I appreciate. I never ever say anybody's name and they, they email. I'm not going to say where you work. Your secret is safe. But some of this, I, I, I do you remember when we had the separate, when everyone was pushing, I think it was this maybe, I was in elementary school. Because I remember that's when I started hearing a lot of the discussion about separation of church and state. And the only way that it affected me was the songs that we were singing at the Christmas concert for the parents. It was still called a Christmas thing instead of a winter festival and all that, like they do in a lot of school, public schools now. But there was this idea that you could have government institutions or public schools or whatever, that they are going to be neutral and they are not ever going to weigh down on one, weigh on, on one side or the other. And that, you know, and this comes back to that standard of having a moral standard. But now that we've seen, I mean, particularly in the past four years, there is absolutely no neutral way because institutions are people. And there's, people are not neutral. Try as they might, there's a line. You know, the saying is that everybody has a price. Everybody has, the, everybody has a line. You're only neutral until you're not. And that's what these institutions are. There's no neutral way to operate all of this. And so back when people were like, oh, get the, get the, get the, the Bible out of schools and separate it, church and state. No, we're not going to have any government institution have a formal endorsement of any kind of religion. And we're go going to pretty much ban it from being represented in the public square. Well, then what takes the place of that? You have this void. And when you think of cultural communism, there is no, they don't have any kind of, they don't have a Bible. They don't have a Torah. They don't have any kind of religious book. They don't have anything like that. They, they don't have a Quran. They, they don't have anything. It's just cultural communism. And it's a lot easier to occupy that space because you can say, oh, no, you can't go after us. We're not a religion. We don't have a Bible. We don't have a Quran. We don't have a Torah. We don't have any of this. You can't go after us. We're not a religion. But they could still impart their viewpoints in all of these public squares that have been considered off limits to every other religion. So you, we ended up as a society shooting ourselves in the foot here. And it adapted perfectly. And it filled this space that had been previously occupied. And now, how do you turn it back? That's the thing. I mean, you, a standard will be applied. And to deny your own standard means that there will be another one put in its place in society. So you can either hold the line for your standard or you can just surrender. That, those are your two options. I, I love, there was a, a point that someone made saying that the only reason that this happened is because people were deciding what, it, it kind of snuck in. People were trying to determine what kind of, uh, what sort of Protestant Christianity they were going to follow. <laughs> and that this kind of, well, I think there's some truth in that. And then it kind of snuck in. I don't think anything snuck in. I think people were apathetic. I think people thought, oh, well, clearly our neighbors have more sense than this when they didn't. So how do you, you can't, how do you eradicate cultural communism? Because if you don't have anything to replace it, it's just going to come back or something worse or, or, or similar is going to take its place. And then it becomes the question of, well, what, what standard? That's where conservatives are. That's where people on the right are right now. Is there an answer? Do they have an answer for it? And how well will they adhere to it? 